Hey guys, my name is Matt Workman, and in this series, we're going to start with Cine Designer, the plugin. Hopefully you've watched the previous series of tutorials to get used to Cinema 4D, moving things around, or you just know Cinema 4D already and you want to dive right in. So let's get into some Cine Designer stuff right now. So we are in Cinema 4D, and I have my little button up here, but if you have Cine Designer, you can also go up here and open it that way. Um, and you know what, and I will make the window a little bit smaller and I'll leave it here for now. So, if this is your first time in Cine Designer, welcome. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take you over these four tabs really quickly, what they do on a high level, and then we're going to start doing some cinematography design. So camera truck, kind of cheesy that I named everything a truck, I don't know if I'm going to keep that forever, but camera truck, lighting truck, and grip truck. So the camera truck, uh, if you click any of these things, it will build a tripod, dolly, jib, or techno crane. Uh, and they're pre-built and all the controls are kind of put together. It's kind of like the beginner way to do it. And it's the really fast way of doing it. I use these a lot, but when it gets a little bit more um, customized, over here we'll have uh, the ability to put a different camera on a certain head on a certain support. And I'm calling techno cranes, dolly supports. So eventually you'll be able to put like a specific camera, like an Alexa versus a RED, on a specific head, like a stabilized Scorpio or, you know, different heads. And then you'll be able to put that on like a techno crane on a Taurus or a techno, a uh, 50 foot techno crane or a hydroscope or just all the different things. Um, those things I mentioned, don't, those don't actually come with Cine Designer right now. I'm going to be building them, uh, but you get a, you get a good amount of stuff enough to get you through most shoots. So that's the camera truck. Next is the lighting truck. Again, we have two pre-built things. One is a four by four frame um, that's going to be used for lighting. Uh, not diffusing, which is different. There are different things in Cine Designer. Um, Cine Designer, again, is a visualizing program. It's not a real world simulation. Um, but we'll talk about those differences as we get into lighting. Uh, same thing with the 12 by 12 frame. It's for lighting, it's not for diffusing. Um, and then here you'll be able to pick a light, like a 2K or a 5K or 10K or a Kino Flow or whatever. You'll be able to put it on whatever stand you want, like a baby stand, a combo stand. Um, you'll be able to put it on like eventually like a condor with truss. Um, a speed rail pipe, a goalpost, a menace arm. This stuff's all pre-built for you. You just pick which one you want and ends up in there. And we'll look at that soon. At the end, here's a modifier. And that only works for like, if you have like a par and you want to put like a chimera on it, you can do that. Uh, next is the grip truck. These are only pre-built. I haven't done the, the grip builder yet, but eventually you'll be able to build custom grip rigs. But we have for now a four x four floppy, four x four beadboard and some other stuff, but we'll get there, promise. Lastly is locations. Now locations is looking pretty empty. I'm going to fill this out eventually with a little bit more stuff to help you out. For people that are very new to 3D, I wanted to have this ship with this. This is what I want you to do. Click that button. Go ahead, click it. See what happens. Uh, you click it. Oh, I clicked it twice. <laughs> um, oh no. Oh no. Okay, so if you click it twice, you know it's just easier than fixing this? That's funny this happened. Um, just, just start a new scene uh, up here. File new. <laughs> and just start a new scene. Just click it once. Okay, so what happens when you click it um, is you get this little studio here, kind of cute. Um, it's a 40 foot psych wall. And if you look over here, the studio is actually grayed out, so you can't select it. Uh, I'm going to hit zero. You can't select the, um, the studio, which is good because it gets in your way. Um, and you shouldn't really need to select it for now. Uh, so that's grayed out. Don't worry about how you do that. Over here is a light. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. A 40 foot by 20 foot overhead light, so pretty cool light. Uh, don't worry, Cine Designer lights look better than this. That's a, a native Cinema 4D light. And uh, here's me. This is my avatar here. And I think it actually, I think his feet are like kind of, I don't know, the feet are fine. So that avatar, that person actually comes with Cinema 4D. So you can click here and you basically put in the height you want and you can have lots of people. And it's great to just have a quick um, stand in. Doesn't look like a real person, but you know, I think it does a good job. Uh, it's pretty nice of them to add that. So what you want to do now is I want you to have a successful render in the first five seconds of using this program. You've brought in your, um, I'm not going to switch out so don't click that again. You've brought in your studio and I want you to hit Apple R. Um, on the PC, I don't know what it is. I think, is it Control R? I'm not sure. You'll figure it out. It's one of those things on the PC. We're going to be doing all Mac shortcuts because that's what I know. But the PC stuff, um, easy enough to translate. So you hit Apple R and you can see right away that this big 40 by 20 soft light overhead is lighting the scene and the shadows are really accurate and the illumination is really accurate. So that's really cool. So you've, you've officially, you've lit something, you know, and I think that that's, that, um, 
if this is your first time doing it, that that's actually really uh, encouraging because I think it takes a long time for people to get to this step sometimes. I just want to make this fast and easy for you. This whole thing is designed to be fast and easy. You could build all of this yourself. It would just take you five years. Um, so you hit Apple R, and then if you move your mouse, oh no, we lost the render. You can just hit Apple R as many times as you want. Should be pretty fast render depending on your computer. I'm on a MacBook Pro. It's not the fastest computer in the world, but that's pretty good. So we have that, and we have that default light. And that's pretty cool. So you've rendered. That's what rendering looks like in 3D. It's not scary at all. Um, what we want to do now is let's bring in our first camera. And I'm going to keep it simple for now. No, I'm not I'm going to do the dolly. So you click dolly. And a, and a Fisher dolly comes in, or a 3D model of a Fisher dolly, modeled very accurately to scale. Um, and it actually functions like a Fisher dolly. So let's see what to talk about here first. So you'll see that there is, I'm going to actually move this down in the order. You'll see that there's a Cinema 4D camera um, attached to this. And that's going to be important later. But for now, it kind of just gets in the way. Um, what I want to do is I want to go to filter and turn off cameras because I just, I don't want to see cameras. I just don't want to see them right now. So let's hit zero and we're going to select the dolly. Now you'll see you can't select the camera. You can't select the head. You can't actually select the actual physical dolly, and that's on purpose. This is, this is you're starting to learn about the design style for Cine Designer. You select this dolly only by selecting this little circle down here. Uh, you can select all of this stuff. Only thing that gets selected over here is the dolly. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is if you want to move it around, you can physically just move it. You can rotate it. All that stuff. Coordinates. Now, if you want to control the dolly, do things that um, all these things have different controls and different functions like the real world. You could go to user data over here and you'll see this is where you actually get into using it like a real world camera. That's the fun part. So we've got the head pan and tilt, the center column height and the focal length. So let's go over each one of those really quickly. Uh, the center column height, if you grab this slider, goes from zero to a hundred. And this actually is the, um, this actually is how much the Fisher Dolly moves up and down. Eventually I'll add all the accessories, like the different ROs and extensions and stuff like that. But for now, um, to get Cine Designer out the door, I just didn't include those. Because most people just use it like this. Maybe with the RO backwards. It's not a big deal, not a big difference. But I will add those details in, uh, in the future. So that's how you move the center column up and down. I'm gonna put it back to 50 for whatever reason. There's really no reason. Uh, same thing with pan and tilt. Uh, pan and tilt by default will let you do 180 in both directions. Uh, you can actually change that if you want. Um, but I find that this is a pretty good sensitivity. And then tilting is negative 90 and positive 90. So tilt up and tilt down. So you're now controlling this camera just like you would a real world camera. And that's an O'Connor tripod up there or tra uh, camera head, support head. Uh, it's modeled very closely after that. It's not a, none of these things are actually, um, you know, made by these manufacturers, nor are they um, you know, allowing us to do this necessarily. We've just made representations of them. Hopefully that's cool with everybody, you know. Uh, this is not a real world model. It's just so that we can plan with it and have it be somewhat accurate to the real world. It's not perfectly accurate, but it's, it's pretty accurate. Um, so what I want to tell you about these sliders for now is that like a lot of the times this is going to allow for some fast movement, these sliders. That's why I have them. It's like really quickly. I just want to look over there, look over there. But when you get into finesse things, you want to grab these little arrows here you're going to click and drag up and down. And you'll see that this is moving in a way slower, more finessed way. So if you're used to working with like a gear head or something like that, this would be like the fast mode. And then this is the precise precision mode. Okay. So I'm going to zero those out. So this is all well and good, right? It's like, okay, I have a Fisher dolly and I'm moving it back and forth, but I'm not looking through it. How do I actually look through this camera? Here's our next step. Uh, eventually, I'm going to try to automate this with a script, but it's it's good to know how to do this on your own. Anyway, it's core to Cinema 4D. How do we look through the camera that's in there? We go to Panel. We're going to go to Arrangements, and we're going to go to View Side by Side like this. And you're going to get this view over here. Likely, it's a top view, and that's going to be really helpful for um, blocking things out and getting layout later when we're lighting. Um, but for now, we want to actually look through the camera. So you go to Cameras. You're going to go to Use Camera. You're going to go to camera. Okay, so now we're looking through it. It's in wireframe mode, though, so that's not that helpful. Let's go to display, and you're going to do garage shading. So now it looks like this. But, you know, I kind of want to look at the frame guide. Like, what? 
I don't want to just look through this and like not see the frame. It's kind of annoying. It doesn't really help me. So what you first want to do is you want to go up to this button here. It's a little like clapperboard with a gear on it. And that's called render settings. Uh, we'll go over all of this in the future. It's kind of important. But for now, all we're going to do is we're going to go to output and put in the aspect ratio you want. So I'm going to put in 1920 by 1080 for 16 by 9. I actually don't like 16 by 9 at all, but that's what you're going to basically be using if you are um, pre-visiting real world stuff because everything's kind of 16 by 9 these days. Um, so with this viewport selected, so that one's selected now, left click, left click, select this viewport, hit shift V. I don't know any other way to get there. I think this is the only way. You hit shift V, you want to go to the, there's a bunch of different tabs. You want to go to view and you want to go to tinted border and you want to change the opacity to 100%. And black for now will work, but you could make it whatever color you want. Um, sometimes if you have a very dark scene, you have to make it white. If you've got an in-between scene, you might have to make it blue. Or just something so that you can tell where the line is. So, exciting stuff. Let's hit zero. Select our dolly. Or you can select it over here too. And we'll talk about this dolly in just a second. So now, now you're actually looking through the camera. So that's exciting. Um... And now I can kind of move the dolly around. I can move you in, move it out. Uh, you can change the focal length. Oh, okay, I hit something funny. Um, 50, 100. Let's say at 100, why not? Select the dolly. And let's uh, boom up. And then using our, fin our, fi our finesse controls, we can kind of frame you like an interview. Kind of preview. Um, what it might look like to do a camera move, though we'll talk about camera moves next. And uh, those are the controls for the dolly. And um, most of the rigs work that way. You select the Cine Designer uh, asset or whatever that came in. You select it. Um, I'll just do it again. You select this here or in the viewport. Sometimes the viewport gets too messy to select things, so you really just want to be over here, I find. Uh, make sure that you are in user data, and that's where the controls are. And I've programmed these controls to work like they work in the real world. So that's kind of like a good overview of Cine Designer. You can go and mess with a ton of stuff right now. Start to play with it. Play with the Techno, claim, techno Crane. Play with the Jimmy Jib. Um, they all work in this similar fashion. We went over how you look in this view here. And before we wrap it up, I want to say that if you middle mouse click, um, it full screens the view. So middle mouse click again, double view. And again, you can go to panels and you can pick an arrangement and you can go back to like the quad view or we can just stick with our, um, our side by side. That also can happen with this button here. Um, that's going to allow you to do that. So that is um, the fundamentals of using Cine Designer for cameras. Uh, you can uh, go play with some other ones, import them, look through them, start moving them around. Um, and that's, that's a core part of Cine Designer is the fact that you can do this. Uh, and it's pretty accurate. Now, if you know about filmbacks, this doesn't have a filmback management system yet. Um, I know how to program it. I'm just waiting for the first um, build to get out into the world, have the first feedback come back from people about Cine Designer before I move forward. And that's the way that this development is going to kind of work. I put out a really kind of like bare bones essentials um, Cine Designer kit. And then based on the feedback, based on the type of people that are using it, um, you as a community will be choosing the direction of the software. Um, that's how I've designed this development process. I want to build stuff that's usable and helpful for the core people who are using it. Uh, and filmback management will be important, but all to say that this is fairly accurate as far as being um, the right focal length. So we could go to say something super wide. Let's dolly ourselves in. If we go to this distance on a 15 in the real world, more like on an Alexa, the filmback for this is more of a Super 35 filmback, not a red weapon filmback, which is kind of a large sensor. This is pretty accurate um, to the distances. Now, nothing in Cine Designer is 100% accurate. Nothing you build in CG will ever be 100% accurate to the real world. And I have to make that statement here now. People ask, uh, as we get into lighting, how realistic is the lighting? It's a good visualization. It's very realistic as far as the shadow and the size, but like, you know, is a, is a T1 in this software the same as a T1 in the real world? No, it's not. Uh, it's not really even the goal to do that necessarily. And before you get too upset, it's just like an AutoCAD or a SolidWorks. If you're building like uh, an object, like a, an iPhone or an iPhone case, 
the one you build in the computer is not exactly the one that you're going to actually build in real life. It might be similar, but it's not exactly the same. And I think of cinema design in the same way. We're designing cinematography. We're communicating. We're visualizing. It's very good at communicating uh, what the real world will look like. But it is, is it in an exact scientific you know, simulation of reality? No. In the future, we're getting closer and closer to, to being able to do that. And when the technology allows for it, I will 100% make it that precise but it doesn't even really need to be that precise at all it's uh we're at this point in technology where like it's close enough to then be able to interpret it back into the real world so i had to make that statement uh, moving forward so in the next episode we are going to actually light something up using cine designer so uh i'll see you then